Hey guys, today I want to talk about a variation of the Wildfire build that incorporates Ice Fury into the mix. This is not a new build by any means, but it is one that has become more viable due to the recent buffs to the Elemental Shaman, and especially to the ones that have buffed up uh, Ice Fury into a place where it actually can be good in Mythic Plus in a wildfire build. So that's what we'll be talking about today. But in relationship to the buffs that just happened, one of the things I had said in my last video was that I didn't think that the lightning builds would really catch up to the wildfire builds, especially in single target. And I just want to say that I couldn't be more wrong about that. They absolutely have caught up. And a lot of times they are either on equal footing or even sometimes even better than the wildfire builds, especially if you have a tank that's pulling around the knowledge that you have certain cooldowns that you can line up and do a lot of damage, particularly your storm elements. So that's one thing I really just wanted to put out there. Like if you don't like a certain build, you don't really have to play that. You can play kind of what you want right now. There's a ton of builds out there for the Elemental Shaman that perform really well at pretty much every key level. In fact, the Wildfire builds just don't really perform that well at lower keys. So really the Lightning builds are very, very good in all situations now and may be soon to take over the Wildfire builds at higher level keys as well. So who knows there, but keep an eye on those. But I've, I've kind of been playing this just because I have fun with it. And it does fill a niche that Elemental Shaman has been really struggling with lately, which is that middle ground, that two to four target situation. And this build, I feel like covers that really well. And Beyond that, it also covers movement even better than Wildfire does. Wildfire is the reason why I've been playing Wildfire, and I feel like a lot of other like really high-end shamans play Wildfire a lot, is because of how much freedom it gives you in terms of movement. The Lightning builds typically have you standing in one place. There is some movement there with, with Ice Fury and stuff like that, but if you have to move too much, it can really throw off the cadence of Lightning builds, whereas Wildfire has a lot more instant cast abilities, and this kind of just pushes that even for further by including Ice Fury into the mix. So with that being said, let's just go ahead and jump right into it and kind of just talk about the overview of this uh, build. Oh, and one more thing I do want to point out is that the guides on Storm, Earth, and Lava have all of this information already updated as well. So if you prefer seeing this in a written format, feel free to check that out. I'll have a link to that in the description down below. But with that being said, let's just go ahead and move in to the overview of the build. All right, and as always, if you're not interested in uh, listening to the breakdown or how that works with different target counts, feel free to skip ahead to the use cases if that's more interesting to you and you don't feel like you need an explanation of how this works. But that being said, let's just go ahead and jump into this. So basically, this is our normal wildfire build. The only difference is we're going to be dropping our power of the maelstrom and our improved flame tongue weapon to pick up ice fury and electrified shocks. In this build, I would always suggest taking elemental blast because of how it interacts with electrified shocks, getting an additional 15 percent damage increase on your on your elemental blast is quite nice so it definitely plays well together with the full package with elemental blast so that's basically what it looks like i will say that you might be thinking if you don't really like uh, more complicated stuff you might be looking at the ice fury and thinking that's a lot of buttons i don't know if i really want to run this that seems like a lot of stuff to juggle the good news is in high target count situations of five or more targets you can just completely ignore ice fury if you want to it is on a simulation standpoint it is a dps loss to even use it in the first place. However, you can use it as a movement ability. So if you know you're going to be moving a lot, you can go ahead and use Ice Fury and then only press Frost Shock if you have nothing else to press when you're moving. If you don't have a Lava Surge or, or something like that, or if you don't have like a, an instant cast uh, Chain Lightning or something like that. So in high target counts, feel free to just completely ignore it. It's really here to really help us out with that four and less target situation. So again, don't worry about it in high tar target count situations unless you need to use it for moving. In that four target count situation is where you really can start getting some usage out of this. So the way that this will work is you'll just be getting everything else on cooldown. You can again, kind of ignore it, and then once you've got everything else rolling, then you can worry about incorporating in the ice fury. That seems to be the best way to, to work, look at this. You don't really need to be worrying about using it on pull because it can really start clogging things up. If you've got charges that are ticking down and you're still worrying about spreading your flame shocks and you still got your Stormkeeper off cooldown, so you still need to use that, that's where you start to get really confused and you're pressing a whole lot of buttons and things are, <laughs> are, are counting down. Don't worry about all that. Treat it like normal wildfire until you've got everything running. Hey, it's me from the future. So I'm actually gonna be showing this only on three targets and one target. And the reason why is when I was doing it on four target dummies, I was getting way too many procs to actually have a good real world situation pop up. And it was just really hard to explain it under those circumstances. I swear every time I do this on target dummies, I get way more procs for like lava burst or DRE than I do actually playing the game normally. So it was kind of hard to show it on four targets. Just know the only difference between three targets and four targets is that you'll be switching out your elemental blast for 
your earthquake um, and that's really the only difference and if there's a lot of movement like if your tank is dragging the mobs from one area to another then maybe just use elemental blast uh, instead of earthquake even in four targets because you need to have all four of those targets in the full earthquake in order to get full value out of that earthquake so if you're, they're moving and you're not staying in the same place they're going to be dragged out of your earthquake then use your elemental blast in uh, four targets as well so like i said not a huge difference between three and four target counts so with that said let's just go ahead and jump straight into the three target count dummies all right so this is kind of like what it looks like i'm going to go ahead and start off my fire elemental into my primordial wave and my liquid magma totem get everything on cooldown i'm gonna go ahead and trigger my splintered elements i'm gonna try to buff those uh, chain lightning uh, storm keepers with uh, master the elements if possible first free global right there is when i use my uh, ice fury just kind of filtering them in anytime i just like either didn't have a proc or i would have been using uh, chain lightning so right here i can get one more off and now i can get that buffed with uh, electrified shock so just a little bonus going on there the other big thing that you need to keep in mind is paying attention to your flame shock duration. I feel like that's the one thing that I'll start accidentally prioritizing over as I'll kind of forget to uh, pay attention to uh, my flame shock. So that's one thing that I need to work on personally. But that's really more of a me problem. The big thing is just don't prioritize uh, your ice fury too high. You know, you want to make sure, like right there, I had an empty global. There really wasn't anything good I could have pressed other than chain lightning. That's where that's filling that void getting a little bit more off there and again the big thing that it's really hard to talk about on on dummies like this is how much movement it gives you uh it does sim worse than uh say like wildfire does actually even in three targets it sims better at at two targets but it, it really sims better uh in two and one targets but it doesn't actually sim as well in three and four targets a little weird there but the the, the thing that i can't stress enough is just how much movement you're able to get and how flexible it is as a ability to press when you have nothing else going on. On these dummies, it can feel really weird because of the fact that I feel like you just get so many more procs when you're doing it on dummies than when you're doing it in dungeons. So that's basically what it looks like on three targets. Um, again, I know it might seem like, why, why would you want to run this? Like it feels like it's really low impact and it is kind of in three targets unless you have to move. So I'm going to show some use cases for that. But first, let's go ahead and just talk about single target just a little bit more. All right, and for single target, and, and honestly for two target too, the only difference between two target and single target is just keeping up that second flame shock. And then our Ice Fury Frost Shocks are going to be doing that natural cleave to that second target as long as they're stacked. Um, and then beyond that, if you don't have Surge of Power active, then we're going to be using Chain Lightning, but you're going to be doing a little bit less of that because of those Frost Shocks. But other than that, it's basically the same as single target. So what that's going to look like is we're going to use our Fire Elemental into our Primordial Wave, into our Liquid Magma Totem, and now we're going to start building Maelstrom. Because one of the things that is really difficult normally about elemental blast builds is it's really hard to get uh, both of our Stormkeeper uh, lightning bolts to be Surge of Power buffed. But it's a lot easier to do it um, when you have your Ice Fury because you get so much more Maelstrom. So right here, um, even without the proc of uh, DRE, I would have been able to get back up to maximum Maelstrom for my elemental blast. So just keep that in mind. And, and, and in general, like I said before earlier in the video, uh, you kind of want to finish off with that Frost Shock unless you have a ton of haste. So if you're under Bloodlust, you can do Elemental, or you can do um, Frost Shock, Elemental, Frost Shock, Lava Burst, Elemental Blast, Lightning Bolt. You can do it that combo if you have a ton of haste. But typically speaking, I think it's better to Frost Shock, uh, Elemental Blast, and then Lava Burst, or Lightning Bolt to get benefit from that Surge of Power. So right here, uh, finishing off of that Frost Shock, Elemental Blast, into that Lightning Bolt to make sure that my uh, my Lightning Bolt's overloads get full benefit out of those Frost Shocks. So right here, I didn't line that up perfectly. I probably should have saved it, but at least the Elemental Blast did get the uh, the buff, or get benefit from the debuff, I should say, of uh, Electrified Shocks. So like right here, Electrified Shocks is now active. Now my Stormkeeper Lightning Bolt. Uh, gets full benefit of that, and then I can easily build back up to getting enough Maelstrom to get the second charge of Stormkeeper Lightning Bolt um, as well, because it just has so much more Maelstrom generation in this build. So that's basically how this works. Um, and ignore the the, dark, the damage on here if you're looking at the, the damage meter. I don't have any buffs active. I didn't have blood, Bloodlust or anything else like that. This does do a lot better single target damage than a normal Wildfire build. But again, the big bonus here, as I have to keep coming back to saying, is in Mythic Plus, you're very rarely being able to stand still and do nothing. There's very few bosses that allow you to do that. Um, and this allows you to move around a lot more so with that being said let's go ahead and jump into some use cases here of 
exactly where I feel like this benefits the most. Like, again, I feel like if, if we're just taking broad strokes, the dungeons where I feel like this build works the best are things like Ruby Life Pools and, like, Temple of the Jade Serpent, just to, to name a few. Also, uh, Shadow Moon Burial Grounds. Not like not like you're worried too much about your Shadow Moon Burial Grounds uh, damage, but those two dungeons are ones where I feel like it's really good. Uh, this, this build does really well in because of the fact that there's just lower target counts overall, um, and especially, like, in Tem Temple of Jade Serpent and... Uh, uh, Ruby Life Pools, there's a bunch of little ads that die really quickly that we can't get a lot of value out of typically in a wildfire build. And this allows us to cover those middle grounds of when those target counts drop down to like three targets sometimes. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into some of these use cases. All right, so picking up with this part of uh, Ruby Life Pools, basically this one pull is this pull right here, the following uh, destroyer, and then also the pull after that. It's just like one giant continuous pull, and it gets really messy, but we're able to kind of keep good damage going throughout. Um, so with that being said, I'm just going to go ahead and jump into it here. So the big thing I'm going to start off with, just as I was saying before, I want to get my uh, flame shocks out first, uh, get as many flame shocks going as I can before uh, triggering my primordial wave. So now I've triggered my primordial wave. I've got a 50% damage. I got a DRE proc in there. Things are looking good. Um, I'm going to get my chain lightnings out. Unfortunately, those things died really quickly. You know, if I really wanted the pad, I would have done the chain lightnings uh, before the little things died, but then I wouldn't have gotten that haste. So you'll notice that I didn't even bother with uh, Ice Fury until... I had gotten rid of everything else. Just like I was saying before, I want to hold off on using that until I've gotten rid of everything else that's important. So it's only like right here. I, that's one thing I should have done differently. I still had that DRE going, but I went ahead and used Ice Fury. That's one thing I could have done better. So there's a lot of mistakes in here that I do. Um, but just keep that in mind that I'm making mistakes. I'm still learning how to do this correctly. Um, and I, sometimes I over-prioritize my abilities in certain places. But... Um, Keep that in mind that I am making all these mistakes and I am still able to perform at a fairly good level. So with that being said, like I'm just going to focus on getting those uh, lava bursts out, make sure I'm not letting my uh, my flame shocks fall off, which I almost do here, a like, like, little bit of overlap. But anytime I have like an extra GCD, I'm going to throw out a flame shock uh, just to get that additional cleave, get a little bit more maelstrom, as well as to move and reposition myself so I'm not standing in blood or anything like, like this. So you notice the healer's dead. I'm going to hold off on my uh, fire elemental because I thought... Um, that we weren't going to continue pulling, but as you'll see, he battle reses him, and we just kind of go into the next pull here um, as soon as this destroyer goes down, uh, or even even before that, he's going to start pulling the destroyer. The warrior dies. I'm like wondering when we're going to actually reset this. Um, oh, and another thing that I forgot to mention that the uh, the warlock is getting PI throughout all of this. This is not. I'm not getting any PIs through this. I feel like that's important to mention too. I don't want to skew it. Uh, and make you think that I'm also getting PI here. Now the Warlock's going to be getting all the PIs here. So he, we're still pulling. This is all one big pull. So again, I got to think about spreading those flame shocks, uh, getting those going, getting that haste running in just a second, um, as well as my uh, Stormkeeper. Again, still not worrying about that Ice Fury. That's still on off cooldown right now. I'm mainly worried about this DRE, making sure I'm uh, getting those uh, Stormkeeper charges out um, and just getting the best usage out of this DRE as I can. Uh, before I start worrying about uh, Ice Fury. So this is where I'm going to start thinking about it, is because now we're down to three targets. So the next time I have like that free global right here, I went ahead and used it, just so I can have it up for any kind of movement, especially with uh, as things start to die a little bit more. And just kind of filtering them in with everything else. Like there, right there, you saw that I spread out uh, the debuff a little bit to get an extra chain lightning in that would be buffed with that Electrified Shocks. Just little things like that to try to squeeze out a little bit more damage. So as he's pulling, again, we're just going to go straight into that next pack. Um, again, none of this has been like very clean so far, but he's just going to go ahead and pull this destroyer into this next pack too. So we're again, we're moving again, uh, moving into this next pack. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, once again, spread those flame shocks out, try to get as much uh, primordial wave. So I got full six targets there. So that'll help out a bit. Um, have to move, I can jump over, uh, use some of those Lava Surge procs, use a uh, Frost Shock proc to move. I'm going to try to move in here. I start. I realized I needed to probably knock this, uh, this Cinder Weaver, and unfortunately I do it just a little bit too late. Uh, he did get a good amount of health there. But as you can see, I'm just like filtering in these Frost Shocks, and it doesn't seem to like have to do, it doesn't really do insane amount of damage, but it does enough to like really help. So like right here, I'm at 121k. As we're killing off this final thing, uh, these final three, and you'd think my damage would like really suffer uh, over the, the the course of killing these, 
But as you can see, as we'll just go ahead and skip ahead. And again, I'm just, like I've said before, just filtering in those frost shocks where I can, you know, moat buffing them is something that's not ne necessarily something that I'm like considering. Uh, but when it happens, obviously that's going to do a good amount of damage as well. Um, so as we're finishing killing off these things, this is where it's, I feel like it's the most important. My damage like really isn't falling off that much, even though the target count is constantly decreasing. So from when it was just like falling off from like what it, whatever it was from six targets down to three, I only lost, you know, like about 3k damage. So again, through that entire pull right there, I, you know, kept my damage up, even though we were constantly having to move dodge abilities and stuff like that. So for me, I feel like this is a good uh, a good use case for this. This was actually this dungeon was actually going fairly well. Uh, the problem actually happened. <laughs> I just feel like this is interesting to point out. We were actually doing all right uh, until this happened right here. So unfortunately, this one wasn't timed. Uh, the <laughs> this ball comes out and just like rolls in place and then explodes. Like I don't I don't know what it got caught on, but you know. So unfortunately, we did have like a bug that ended that run. So that's this version, or that's you know this breakdown in a nutshell i've got another use case that i think is also compelling as to why this build is good as well so we'll move on to that one now all right so here we are in azure vaults and i'm not sure if this is necessarily the best build to take into azure vaults but i've been experimenting with it a lot so obviously i've been taking it everywhere um this room is one of the most difficult ones to keep our damage up on because of how much movement the trees are constantly putting down uh like puddles on the ground when the ads die they explode so there's just a lot of movement that happens as well uh, so it can be really difficult to kind of keep our damage up but I feel like because of Ice Fury and because of the ability for you to get a lot more casts on the move it's made it a lot easier to kind of keep your damage up uh, while you're moving so especially because you're doing all of that movement uh, you know earthquakes are going to be a, a lot less uh useful because of the fact that they're going to be constantly being moved out of. So because of that elemental blast, and because of those ice fury charges, being able to do more damage on the move while moving, as well as just more damage to the mobs that isn't just on the ground, uh, allows you to kind of keep your damage up here. So like, as you can see, like, even though we've moved around this entire room and maybe I am moving too much on top of it, that's, you know, something that I sometimes do just way too much. It's just too much movement. Uh, but even with all of this movement going on, uh, I'm able to keep my damage up just purely because of the fact that I, I, I have so much more access to movement abilities while I can still do damage. So as you can see, as we're finally finishing off this pack, going into the first boss of Azure Vaults, I'm coming out of this pack at around 100k and we moved around this entire area as a group. So I'm trying to stay in there for the healer so the healer can get to me easier for any damage that I take. Um, as well as being able to stay in range of the mobs as well. So being able to do something like that, super useful, super helpful for Ice Fury, being able to be a lot more mobile. So another use case uh, coming up after this one as well. All right, so here we are in Shadow Moon Burial Grounds coming up on this pack of four where you have two spiders and two bats. Um, I do have most things coming up uh, off cooldown in the next couple seconds already. So I do have most things running here, um, but I, I think this is an interesting pull because of the fact that I do mess up. I forget to spread my flame shocks first and kind of get my uh, Stormkeeper out beforehand. So I kind of do things in the wrong order, but it still comes out okay uh just because of how much damage am i able to pump out here so the other thing to note is i'm not getting pi we do have a warlock in in here or sorry we do have a priest in here but i'm not getting pi for this pull but you'll notice that you see i'm not putting out my flame shocks yet so all of this is kind of backwards uh again like i said I, this was back when i was still learning it this was from a couple days ago um and just kind of like over prioritizing the wrong things but as you can see i'm starting off i've already done my stormkeeper i've already done my primordial wave Keep that in mind. Stormkeeper and Primordial Wave are already used at this point. That's usually where you're taking, that's usually where you have your most amount of damage uh, at this point. So keep that in mind. I'm at 125k now. I did the rotation backwards. My mind got jumbled. But check out how the, this finishes off here. So I'm going to use my Ice Fury. I'm going to filter in those charges. Um, and then I'm also going to make sure I'm like still moat buffing my earthquakes. Get some chain lightnings out with that. Uh, electrified shock debuff and then i'm going to finish off those two targets there and then when there's just two targets left uh, i'm still doing that same thing getting some chain lightning value out of that electrified shock buff and then finishing off 
these two spiders. So as you can see, even though I messed up the opener, I still came out with some fairly respectable damage, even with those two bats dying much faster than everything else. So again, where, where I had like basically ended the opener where you're typically having the most amount of damage at around 32k, as I continue going on with these frost shocks, my damage isn't even really falling off here because I'm actually like propping it up with that frost shock damage and keeping that damage up, even going above where I was after my initial burst because of those frost shocks being filtered in there. So I was able to actually like either stay the same or buff up my damage above where I was even though I messed up my opener so I the the, the frost shock damage can be very potent and I think that's that's basically what I wanted to point out there that it can do some actually like significant damage even if you're not moving uh they they are still useful even though they might not necessarily always sim better uh than say like a wildfire in three target which is or three or four target technically wildfire does will typically sim better but that being said in that pull i got zero dre and i got zero pi so none of these like luck based things i didn't get any of that uh and i was still able to do respectable damage because of ice fury and keeping myself propped up with some of that damage so i feel like that pull with all the mistakes in it but getting that value out of ice fury is like really uh is a good example of how this build can really uh do well in in four targets and and how it can really help prop up some of that damage and the last thing i wanted to show you is hersia on uh the first boss of halls of Val valor because i felt like you know even with all that movement there it felt like that was getting some good use out of that as well so i'll go ahead and show that now all right, so here we are on Hersia, and we're just going to jump right into it. So again, just like everything I was saying on the train, training dummy still here uh, applies. Obviously, we've got Lust this time, so it's going to be a lot easier to fit everything in. Um, but it is able to just do a good amount of single target damage. And that's the thing that uh, I feel like is really useful about this build, is it's still very much AoE focused. But we're just taking a little bit away from normal Wildfire, just a little bit of that AoE damage away from Wildfire to gain a good amount of single target. Now, is this the best? single target build uh, for Elemental Shaman? Probably not. Like, there's definitely better builds out there. Uh, if you've seen some of the lightning builds recently, there's some there's some lightning builds out there that do a ton of single target. And, like, if you like playing that build, like, absolutely go for it. You know, this is just, like, one more option that you have. And this kind of fits just, like, that different niche of that lower target count, which, which you can still get a lot of value out of, but you're still able to do decent single target damage. You're still able to do decent AOE damage. This kind of just kind of covers all the bases. At least that's what I've experienced so far uh, for me. Like, does it do the most single target? No. Does it do the most AOE? No. Does it do the most mid ground? Kind of yes and kind of no, but the big value pick up here in Ice Fury of being able to move give you that uh, that versatility in your playstyle, as well as you can get a little bit of burst out of it if you really want to just like chuck out those Ice Furies like one after the other after the other. It actually is a pretty good amount of burst if you need that kind of burst in a small amount of time. You actually have access to that too. So it just gives you so much more versatility. Would I run this in all keys and content? Yeah, probably not. I I, it's, I haven't experimented with it enough yet to know if it's like my new favorite build, uh, but it does have a lot to play around with. And I do feel like I've gotten some really good results with it. And maybe once I get better with it, it will be a good all around build. Like if you're looking for a build that has the potential to be good in all scenarios, I feel like this build actually has a chance to do that. Uh, it has a chance to be the the all arounder. If you're not really sure how to focus, or if you're like, I'm not sure what my, my group's going to be good with i'm not sure if my group's going to be building more aoe i don't know if they're going to be building more single target and if you're not like really sure where you need to fit in i feel like this is actually a fairly decent build for it um and then on top of that you're getting all that benefit from the ice fury of being able to just move while casting just that much more often you just have so many instant cast abilities um and and it also helps you stay le uh, less tied to relying on dre um you still definitely get a ton of benefit out of it um but you feel like you're having to worry about it just a little bit less. So it, it gives you more to do in those downtimes when you're not getting those DREs, which helps cover, uh, you know, those, those down periods of time when you're not able to generate as much and you feel like you're just stuck casting lightning bolt over and over and over again, just hoping for procs. This really helps covering it. Just like I said, just like in the last clip where I got zero DRE procs, uh, and like not a whole lot of like just decent procs in general, and I was still able to keep up with damage. This is kind of the same way. Like right here, I, I feel like I 
I didn't really count them as I was watching this. You can go back and look, but I feel like I didn't even get that many DRE procs here. So with that being said, I feel like I was able to do decent damage uh, to single target while still dodging things and moving in for the, the shield and stuff like that. I mean, it's not a huge heavy movement fight, but it is worth pointing out uh, that you can do decent damage in single target, in AOE, and also in that mid-range count as well. So, you know, in closing, like... There's, there's a couple different ways you can look at it, you know, like there, there's also, I just want to point, mention out uh, as well, that you can also remove the points in Skybreaker's Fiery Demise and the Magma Chamber and put them in the uh, Echo Chamber and uh, Mountains Will Fall, and you can also get a, you, so you'd squeeze out even a little bit more single target damage, depending on your gear. My gear is so messed up right now, I didn't even realize it. I sim so much lower than a lot of my uh, elemental uh, colleagues or peers right now, I didn't even realize my gear was so jumbled because I have stats just all over the place. It's something I need to address. Um, but that being said, like my, my gear puts me more in line with using skybreakers in all situations. But if you should always sim yourself, like if you're looking to try to squeeze out a little bit more damage, like for like, let's say court of stars, you could go down a uh, mountains will fall instead, squeeze out a little bit more damage out of your elemental blasts to get more single target damage without losing too much of that AOE. So there's a little bit of a little bit of things you can move around there to get a little bit more usefulness out of this if you want to push even more down into that single target but again i feel like this kind of covers everything i wanted to show like the real strengths of this build again decent aoe decent single target and decent mid-range target count really helps it be a nice over round, overall build for all target count situations. It's not going to be the best in any one of those, but it still will be a useful type of profile to have available. Um, and I also find that it's fun. So, you know, let me know what you think about this build. If you've tried it out at all, be experimenting with it. You know, I've still got a lot of things to work out. I feel like I can play a lot better than what I've even shown in these clips. And I feel like the ceiling for this is much higher than what I've even shown. So with that being said, uh, like I said, let me know in the comments what you guys think of it. If you've gotten a chance to try it. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, ask below as well, as well as in the Shaman Discord. But other than that, guys, uh, I stream at Twitch at uh, twitch.tv slash Ridmark. So feel free to come check me out there. And uh, yeah, I think now I've covered it all. So other than that, guys, I think I'll, I'll call it here for now. But if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video.